Let's get started. No, I mean like what I mean by get started is I mean you do all the work and I will <laughs> randomly take some video. Well, you know, that's kind of appropriate because I am the one who flipped it. <laughs> Meet Hicks. That's the name we've given to this 1940s Bantam T3C trailer. My best buddy Chris and I bought it, restored it, flipped it, salvaged it, and are now starting over with it together. Today, we installed the new axle twice, mount a switch box in the new tongue box, and install the new off-road hitch. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be uh, replacing the axle that has been kind of towed in from the flip. And how are we going to do it? We're going to undo some bolts, take the old one off, and then put the new one on. So super complicated. <laughs> super complicated. So we went to work taking the old damaged axles off, which is not complicated, especially at this point, where we've done everything on this trailer at least twice. We used jack stands to keep everything upright as we pulled off the tires so we could access the U-bolts that hold the axle to the leaf springs. I feel like you're not really working on your rig unless you gotta have a pair of pants on that show a little bit of butt crack. But I feel like at this moment, I have begun working on the rig for sure. One of the things we wanted to try this time was to unflip the axles. Basically put the axle where it was meant to go, which is on top of the leaf spring, instead of on the bottom where we had previously put the axle to give Hicks more clearance. We thought that by unflipping the axle, we could lower the center of gravity and help prevent a future rollover. So this might be an issue. We've got it up on, a, on the jack. So this is representing some level of flex, let's say or compression of the springs. And there's not a lot of room. We haven't tightened this down yet. There's not a lot of room, so we might we might see some rubbing. Mmm, that's not good, bro. That is not good. That 100% uh, will not work. Nope, that's a hard no. Why, what's wrong with that? Yeah, uh, still on jacks there, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, so this is not gonna work. Uh, the, the tires are way too close to the fenders. They're gonna rub. And so we're gonna um, flip it back up. We're gonna flip the axle back on the underside of the springs, reattach the tires, and go with it. All right, you're taking it out. Boy, does that make a huge difference. It's almost comical that there's no in-between. It's like either it's on, on top of the springs and there's no room for the tire or it's underneath the springs and there's this massive gap. So we just have to maybe go back to the drawing board a little bit and, and think of some other ways where we can keep weight down low on Hicks so it doesn't, you know, flip again. The center of gravity we'd still have to figure out, but for now, this new axle is looking good. So we're actually working ahead a little bit, which is great. So we think with our extra time, we are going to take this thing and put a switch box right back here. And let me show you this switch box. This is maybe my favorite switch box of all time because the switches are like so satisfying. They're like big, like rubber. So they're like, we've got waterproofing and dust proofing. And we're gonna mount it on the back of the box to try and protect it from some of the dust and mud and dirt and water that would get kicked off the tires. So what we're gonna do now is basically just cut a hole in that box and fit this thing in it. For this job, we'd be putting a hole in the back of the tongue box, which turns out was pretty easy as long as you have the right tool. Chris, what are you using? What is this thing? Um, it's this Ryobi like cut off tool. So, but it uses like kind of a vibration. So it's kind of like a, uh-huh, like a what? It's kind of like a, a vibration tool. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty it's like accurate. something that vibrates things mm -hmm. quickly back and forth. Uh-huh. Vibration yeah. tool. Using vibrations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Great. I think you got the idea. So this cover panel just clips on. There's just four clips here. So we're gonna put it on right there and just put it on. There it is. Oh yeah, baby. Switches galore. Kind of having the, the plastic or the poly 
Um, I think that, you know, with rock chips and stuff getting kicked up, it's just not going to get dented and scraped up and get all rusty like a metal one will. So I think it's going to be just kind of for our purposes a lot better. Plus, it's nice because it's also made in the U.S. Hey! Hey, yeah. Look, the one thing. <laughs> With the axle and the switch box looking good, it was time to tackle the hitch install. We're about to go try to put this new hitch on Hicks. It's a little more complicated than we thought it was gonna be, like everything is. And so we need someone with a welder. And so we thought about all of our friends and everybody knows we know who has welders. And there's one person in this world we know who has at least three different kinds of welders and four lawnmowers and two four wheelers and at least one backhoe, and that person is my dad. So we're gonna go see my dad and see if he can help us weld this new hitch onto Hicks. <laughs> Chris, are you, so this is the first time we're actually towing Hicks since we put the new axle on the trailer. Yeah. Uh, are you nervous about it at all? Yeah, I mean, are you asking if I'm nervous of am I gonna flip it? Mm -hmm. Like, like ooh, right here in your dad's house? We're gonna t go around this corner here. Ooh. Are you nervous? It's, ooh, ooh, do not, not too, not, nope. Uh, okay. Back there, it didn't flip. Nope, it's, it's, uh, so far so good. One truck, two trucks. Just needs a trailer. There's one welder. Oh, there's a, there's a legit trailer. My dad has many, many things. So we're here at my dad's garage. And I don't know if you can see everything behind me, but this guy uh, has all kinds of welders, metal parts. He's got a, a pintel hitch down there he picked up at an auction, a couple chainsaws, a tool, a tool collection back here, another tool case. He's got a grinder over there for sharpening tools, 60 gallon air compressor. This is the guy to go to if you need a tool or if you need to like do something to anything. So lucky me. I've got a guy like this as my dad, and we need him today. This is gonna be fun, guys. Yeah, this always fun. It's right good. or wrong, it's fun. Yeah, wait until you see. You guys get the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First thing you do is get that thing off. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you kind of what I was thinking, and then you can tell me like why it's a, a dumb idea, and then we'll figure out what to do. We'll go back and forth. Yeah. We'll trade dumb ideas until we figure it out. Exactly. My dad humored us and listened. We went inside to brainstorm an approach to mounting the hitch. The basic problem is the mounting holes on the hitch are too narrow to be bolted onto the trailer neck. Our plan was to weld a smaller metal tube inside the existing one, then weld a mounting plate on top of that to attach the hitch. If this sounds complicated, it's because it kind of is. <laughs> My dad's like, what are you doing? Chris is just used to me doing this. With our foolproof plan in place, we got started. First, we stripped off the old hitch to see how we could get the smaller square tube inside and attach it. It fit inside decently well, but we had to figure out how to stabilize it so it was centered and tight. So we decided to weld washers as spacers all the way around. We get two more here and two more back here. Mm -hmm. to eliminate the slop. But even, the, even that far off, even if you, if you did it that far, mm -hmm. it's still gonna trail. Yeah, still but track just fine. You want it right, right? Sure. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, look at this thing. It's perfect. It's look, totally precision. Look not at a, all of these precision details. <laughs> we grabbed the metal tubing, grabbed the washers, and my dad cranked up his arc stick welder and started melting metal. So here's my dad uh, getting ready to weld, and here's Chris uh, drinking whiskey. Yeah, I'm, I'm supervising. <laughs> it's because we don't know what the hell to do. My dad made quick work of welding the four washers to the tube, and we took it back inside to see if it would fit. With the washers attached to the sides, it was a much tighter fit, and with a little encouragement, it was centered as well. With step one done, we decided to weld the two tubes together, and my dad welded those things pretty heavily. Everything was ground down to keep it from looking too gnarly, and we were ready to attach the mounting plate. My dad just laid down a ton of metal around here, around the, around the top, and on the bottom too, so this is like so solid. We're gonna put some bolts in here, some grade eight bolts as well, just to, to secure this piece. And then the plan is to weld this on top, which is a mounting plate that uh, where the holes line up for our hitch. However, here's, here's what's weird. This hitch is designed apparently to go over this size metal, but there's not enough room for the nuts. And so what we're doing now is we're cutting some metal 
that we're gonna run basically, let's do it with this, underneath here. So kind of like we're kind of fabbing up a bit of a U-bolt, but it'll be something that has more tension on the metal because it'll be flat pieces running across the bottom. We were now drilling through both tubes in order to put grade eight bolts through them in an effort to add extra stability to this newly formed tongue. We've reinforced the tongue, extended it, welded on this mounting plate and installed this new hitch, which should give Hicks a lot better off-road performance. Then what we did is we took this mounting plate and we welded this mounting plate on. Um, it's, it's more of a tack weld, uh, but that's all it really needs to be because this plate is held together with these grade eight bolts coming down here. And then we, we custom cut um, these, these plates that kind of serve as like a, a really strong U-bolt except for it's flat. So it has more, more pressure across that surface area. And then we just cranked it down and that's what's holding the hitch on. With all of this together, this is exponentially 10 times stronger, it's gotta be, than the ball hitch that we had on before that was like aluminum and just kind of had a couple bolts holding it on. So we put in this, uh, we put in a, a metal tube inside of a metal tube and it's been welded and then it's got two grade eight bolts drilled through both and, and basically that's what's reinforcing it on the front and bottom. And we all feel very, very confident with the amount of welding and bolts and everything that's on this, that this is gonna be as strong if not stronger because it's got more steel in it than it was before. The last thing we did was attach it to Ripley for the drive home and it fit perfectly. This is gonna be an awesome trailer. Join us on the next episode where we install the tongue box, the molly panels, and run the electrical wiring. See you then.